competencies as a medical student and future junior doctor is to be able to systematically approach and interpret chest radiographs. So it is important to actually know your ABCs of radiograph interpretation. So firstly, the first step in your search is going to be to look at the airways in the scan. And I will go into this in, in a little bit more detail for each, but I think it's just important to know the general search pattern in the first instance. So once you've looked at the airways, we will then go on to look at the breathing of the patient. So more specifically, Because we're looking at a scan, this is going to examine the lung fields as well as the pleural cavities and spaces. C then is going to be the cardiac system. So as the name implies, this is going to be examining the heart, so particularly your heart borders and your mediastinum. D is then going to be examination of the diaphragm. And lastly, E is going to be everything else. If we go into this a little bit more specifically, with respect to the airways, there are three major considerations or questions that you need to ask yourself. So the first criteria associated with the airways is going to be looking at the vertical alignment of the scan. So to do this, you're going to be examining the trachea, so specifically looking at if there's any deviation beyond the mid-sagittal plane. So you'll be looking at if there is any pushing or pulling of the trachea. This is usually going to be indicative of where pathology is located. So more specifically, if we see pushing of the trachea to a particular side that the pathology is located on, This is then going to be indicative or suggestive of a large pleural effusion or tension pneumothorax. Conversely, if you see pulling to a particular side, This is going to be suggestive of consolidation, which is going to be an area of higher density, as well as suggestive of partial or full lung collapse. The second criteria then with the airways is going to be to examine the main bronchi. And then lastly, we're going to be looking at the hyalus structures, such as the vasculature, as well as lymph nodes. So I, I think what is important to understand is by looking at the main bronchi, for instance, this is going to be a systematic way to identify if there is an obstruction of the airways. So for example, we know that the right primary bronchi is going to be a lot shorter, but it's also going to be wider and more vertical in comparison to the left. So it's going to be more likely that a foreign object can be aspirated or lodged in the right main bronchi. So moving on to our second criteria then, when we're looking at B, we're going to be examining the lungs and the pleural cavities. So specifically with our lungs, we divide each lung into three zonal layers, so upper, middle, and lower. And typically we're going to assess to, see the, to look at if there's presence of any masses, any nodules, but also to look at the general radiographic appearance. So firstly, both of the lungs should be similar in size and shape. So we need to assess or work out if there's any asymmetry.
Also in the case of COPD, we know that we're going to see an enlargement in terms of the volume of the lungs. The second main criteria then is considering each segmental or zonal level and looking at the density. So looking at if there are specific regions that have an increased opacity, which is then going to result in consolidation. So this is important in terms of being able to recognize any obstructions or um, interstitial fluid or blood in that region. And then the last criteria that we look at is going to be the costophrenic angles or recesses. Increased opacity um, in the costophrenic angles as well as an alteration in shape. So um, costophrenic blunting is going to be also indicative or suggestive of infection. And lastly, what we need to look at under B is going to be for pleural effusions. So in a healthy individual, you're not going to be able to see the um, pleural layer. However, in unhealthy individuals, you will actually see thickening of the pleural layer, um, which will be more evident on a chest radiograph. So our third criteria then, when we're looking at C, we're going to be examining the heart. So there are three main search patterns or three main parameters that you're going to look at when we're looking at the mediastinum. The first is going to be the size and the shape of the heart. So specifically looking at your cardiothoracic ratio. So in a normal adult, the cardiothoracic ratio on a PA radiograph should be less than 50% of the total width of the thorax. If it is any greater than this, this is then going to be suggestive of cardiomegaly or enlargement of the heart. The second aspect that we then consider is the borders of the heart. So what I mean by examining the border, borders is there is a sign which is known as the silhouette sign, which is going to be referring to the loss of a border or a region of um, contrast opacity. So specifically, if we consider the heart, we know that we're going to have left and right borders of the heart, and we know this is going to then correspond to different lobes of the lung. So what is important is if you actually lose one of those borders, it is going to be suggestive of pathology with the surrounding lung tissue. So for example, if you lose the right border of the heart on the x-ray, this is going to be associated with collapse of the right middle lobe. So conversely then, if we see a loss of the left border of the heart, this is then going to indicate that we have a left upper lobe collapse. And then lastly associated with the mediastinum is going to be examining the aortic knuckle. So because I'm running out of room, I will draw this up here. So we know that the aortic knuckle or the aorta is going to pass posterior to the pulmonary vessels and this is going to show us this nice knuckle lateral protrusion on your x-ray. If you cannot visualize the aortic knuckle, it generally indicates that there is an aneurysm um, that may be prevalent in the aorta. All right, so then our fourth point, when we're then looking specifically at the diaphragm, what we're looking at is the hemidiaphragm. So we're looking at the summits of each dome of the left and right diaphragm. So in terms of our three point criteria again, the first parameter that we're going to look at is tracing the shape of the diaphragm from lateral to medial. So, so what this tells us, if you cannot see the hemidiaphragm on the left side, this is then going to be indicative of consolidation associated with the left lower lobe. Secondly, what the shape can tell us is if you have a flattening of, so a bilateral flattening of the left and right diaphragms, this is typically going to be indicative of an enlarged volume in the lung tissue, which can be suggestive of um, 
COPD or asthma. Conversely, if you have a unilateral um, flattening or alternatively what you tend to see is this tent shaped increase in one side of the diaphragm, this is going to be suggestive um, of tension pneumothorax in one of the lungs. Again, with the diaphragm, you'd be looking or examining the costophrenic angles. So you'd be looking at whether there is blunting. Abnormalities associated with the costophrenic angles are, can be indicative of infection or pooling of interstitial fluid. And then lastly, what you'd like to consider is, is there any air that is going to be visible beneath or inferior to the diaphragm? This is more important in the case of pathology associated with the intestines and the close relation of these anatomical structures. Lastly then, what we need to consider, because we know that this doesn't describe or accommodate everything in a chest radiograph, is going to be everything that we have missed. So if I change colours once again, the first thing that you need to consider is going to be the osteology. So we're interested in looking at the bones. Um, specifically to scan for fractures and dislocations, as we know that this can have detrimental effect, effects on the surrounding soft tissue. Secondly, we need to look at the surrounding soft tissue to make sure that there's no um, peripheral abnormalities. And then lastly, you want to consider if the patient has any tubes, valves or implants in the region of interest as that is going to affect the treatment options associated with your diagnosis. And then very, very lastly, we need to make sure that you go back and review or scan the so-called review areas in a typical chest radiograph. So these review areas are as follows. So firstly, we're going to be reviewing the lung apices. We're going to do a retrocardiac examination or review to make sure nothing is behind the heart. You're also then going to look behind the diaphragm as well as the periphery of each lung. And lastly, you will go back and look at or examine the hyalus structures. So this is a very comprehensive approach dealing with how you examine or interpret a chest radiograph. The bottom line essentially is it is important to actually have a systematic way um, or search pattern when you're looking at a radiograph in order to make sure that you don't miss any vital or minutiae pathology. So the best way to recommend doing this is to firstly look at the airways, then to look at the lung tissue itself as well as the borders, to then consider the cardiothoracic ratio and the heart borders, to then look at the hemidiaphragms if there's any abnormalities, and then if all else fails, to consider the soft tissue consider the bone in terms of pathology as well as osteology and cause of trauma um, and then to go back to our review areas to make sure that there is nothing that you haven't missed. So in the next part of the lecture I'm then going to go into a couple of um, examples of major pathology associated with chest radiographs and we will then practice applying this search criteria to each of those scans.